Um, so we kind of set a plan out. And uh, as it stands now, we're definitely going to be working very, very hard on continuing uh, to balance the body through the therapeutic side. Um, and the plan is also to meet once a week to uh, create uh, exercises in a program which I'll be training her with to, uh, to enhance sports specific movement. So I'll, I'll be trying to fill in the blanks where, where they exist knowing what her biomechanical deficits are and knowing uh, what she's doing strength and conditioning and knowing what the sport requires trying to put it all together and just uh, it's almost like enhancing what's already there in terms of the strength and conditioning and the same thing nutritionally uh, she's under good care it's to just uh, supervise and work on my specialty which is looking at the the food and the immune system and how the immune system will affect her her muscular her muscular capacity. So those are the those are the three aspects that I'm I'm looking at. I mean again with Meltin it's been it's it's very easy, uh, very disciplined person, very focused person. Knowing that coming in then manage the situation very differently than it would be with other athletes that maybe you know, that don't have necessarily the same focus or don't understand what we're trying to achieve. I think she understands very well what we're trying to achieve, whether it's through the therapeutic aspect or strength and conditioning side of things. So once she knows that, I mean, getting into focus or getting into a zone is, is much, much easier. Well, for me, it's uh, what we need. It's what we like to have to as an athlete. But uh, the challenge was more like um, there's a lot of thinking and a lot of like, it was not difficult uh, movement. It was like very basic movement, but to get to that movement or to be there for a longer amount of time that I usually, I, I am like in a position like that and, and then strain that position. That was like, that, that was the challenge of it. But uh, like I said, it's just, it's just to get better and better. And, that's why we're so focused to, to try to get those uh, basic movements to be uh, better and easier to do. Uh, when Dev is demonstrating the, the technique, you think it's going to be easy. <laughs> but it's a bit challenging and then you work on it and you get better. And I think it's, uh, it's also his it's approach of um, is not only on therapeutic, like we have said, it's strength conditioning, but it's nutrition. So, like as an athlete, if you have one person that does strength conditioning but doesn't understand all what is it around, then sometimes it makes it a little bit difficult or it doesn't understand the athletes as much as maybe Dev does. So to have somebody that has that knowledge and that has worked with other elite athletes, then that's why I think we get that trust because we know that he knows what we're going through and uh, he knows what the effect is going to be of that training, of that treatment, and um, that's what makes the treatment or his work um, great. We later sat down with Martin de Grenier one-on-one -on -one to talk about sports, teaching, and life beyond the Olympics. Martin, thank you for being here with us today. It's for a pleasure. Joining. It's a pleasure for us to have you. Um, you've been an Olympian, a three-time world champion in wrestling. You hold two bachelor degrees, an MA, and you're a CJEP teacher as well. Where do you find the time to sleep? <laughs> and have you always been so driven? Yeah, I've always been like really, really busy, even though when I was doing uh, gymnastics before and um, university working before getting into like a fully full-time mm -hmm. job athlete if we can say it like, that way. But um, for me, I think it's, it's really important to, to be driven like that and to do what you like to do. Right. When did you start wrestling and when did you decide to pursue it uh, professionally, to, to dedicate so much of your uh, time to it and your life to it? It, it was a fluke. Uh, like I said, I was doing gymnastics before and uh, I went to CJEP in Sport in gymnastics. And we, need, we had to do a phys ed education class. And the only class that was fitting in my schedule was a wrestling class. 
And uh, at so first I was like, <laughs> maybe, you know? And then uh, I started like that and uh, I pursued it. And uh, I really started when I went to university at Concordia. We have a wrestling team. And uh, I was able to get uh, development uh, through the university level. And I was hoping to get to the international level, but I didn't know at that time if I was going to be able to. Um, was there a pivotal moment where you said, yes, I'm going to, when did you decide that you were going to go for the Olympics? I think it was uh, in 2004. Um, well, December 2003, I went to the trials for the Olympics in 2004. And um, I ended up losing in uh, the final of a tournament. And in 2004, I won my first uh, national title. But I beat the girl that was qualified to go at the Olympics. And she was a bronze medalist at the World Championships. And she ended up fin finishing fifth uh, at the Olympics. So for me, it was like, if you can be that girl, then you can be really successful right. like at the world level. Right. And that year, I won, I won also the World University Championships. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's when I started to really believe that I could be successful at the, the world level. Yeah. I want to speak to you a bit about your work with the Dev Chatterjee yep. per Performance Specialist and the circumstances in which you uh, came to see him because you came, you first came to see him in 2009 for yep. knee problems, um, but after you say that after only three treatments, you say that the pain had vanished. But uh, beyond that, he's been valuable uh, to just the way that you prepare your body for competition. Um, can you speak a bit about that and what you've gained from your work with him? Yeah, I think it's it's, uh, it's a different um, technique that he's using and is just um, he's helping, I guess, her body to just be a hundred percent in terms of like strength and balance. Mm -hmm. So even though I came in with a knee injury, the knee was not a ligament injury; it was more muscular injury, and I was able to to get back into the strength and mobility uh, very fast so for me it was just good to come all the time just to for a quick checkup before tournaments and it, it would help yeah and mm -hmm. um, what gave you confidence in him as a specialist when you first uh, started working with him and as you continued because you're still uh, seeking counsel from him what what traits or what have you found that has really uh... well first of all I knew that he was experienced with other athletes he had uh, other athletes that he treated and it, if the athletes are coming back that means he's doing a good right. job too right and after after he treated me for the first second and third treatment and I could see like the difference then then you could see like that his, his experience is valuable and that it can help me to to get better yeah and Dev has mentioned that you are one of the most disciplined athletes that he's worked with um, in terms of just you know following the counsel that he gives you um, how important is that for you, and how do you stay so disciplined? You've mentioned that you've been, you've had a lifestyle that was always busy, and you've always been driven. But how, how important is discipline in all of that for you? Well, I think for me, uh, my goal is, is to go back to the Olympics, and not just to go back, but to win a, med a medal there. And I think when you have a goal like that, you have to be disciplined. You have to to set priorities in your life because it's so short if you think about it like I'll have time to do whatever I want after right but this is a crucial moment in my life and I want to do everything that is uh, possible and that would help me to get the best result as I can right. and at, at those big events mm -hmm. and um, so I think for me it's kind of easier if you think in think that way because it's not like I'm punishing myself but it's just like it's gonna come later <laughs> right 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 um, in all sports there's a big uh, component of competition uh, competition with uh, either an opponent but it can be as in your sport which is uh, also a competition with yourself so always surpassing yourself um, how would you uh, how would you describe that? How, how is that for you? What is that relationship uh, for you to surpass yourself? Would you, do you hold yourself to really high standards? Uh, have you, how has that uh, yeah. process evolved over the years for you? I, I think for me, in gymnastics it was easy, you know, you want to get that move or you want to get that routine perfectly. Mm -hmm. 
um, in wrestling is even though you were winning sometimes is you know that you did some mistake and you want to correct those mistakes so even though you you win a world title you know that over the three or four matches that you wrestled there's like little things that you need to fix and for me it was like always after tournaments to go back look at the tight tapes and then correct those mistakes and I think that's how you you improve you know you're you're never like perfectly at the top and you want to reach further and further right you also you're a physical education uh, teacher at Vanier mm -hmm. College here in Montreal uh, how do you see what you've learned through sports uh, come through in your teaching and enrich your teaching and and what you can pass on to uh, your students is that a way for you to give back is it uh, oh for sure uh, that's uh, what I wanted to do the most to give back either to the, the youth or young people, athletes, or other sports. I think what you've learned as an athlete is it's incredible, incredible, and it's um, it's fantastic. It's just funny sometimes when the students are telling me that they don't have time to do this. I'm like, right. no, no, you have the time. <laughs> just find it. You know, right. you need a good schedule, but you have the time to do it. You know. And it's, it's to give them also perspective on other things and to learn uh, lessons on, on, on what they're doing, you know. And yeah, everybody's doing mistakes, but if you can learn some lessons on that, then uh, that's how you're going to be a better person and a better student. Right. And what would you say um, has, what is the value of sport for you beyond just sports? Because at some point, uh, every athlete has to retire from the sport, right? Yeah. You must have, equally, there must have been things as a student in your drive and, and doing so well at school that helped you in your sports, but what do you think uh, the value of sports is? Uh... For sure, I think I'm able to, like, it's not every student in my class that are gonna become elite athletes. Mm -hmm. And for me, it's the most important thing is if you can improve on what you're doing, I'll be happy, you know? Right. So I'll give whatever, I have to help you improve on whatever, mm -hmm. basketball, volleyball, fitness. But if you ask me a question, I'll answer you. If I don't know the answer, mm -hmm. I'll try to go get the answer or I'll try to uh, suggest you where you can get the answer. Mm -hmm. And for a student is like, also follow your dream, you know? It's, uh, mm -hmm. it's not because somebody is telling you that you can't do it, that you can't. And it's to show them that pursue on, on what you like to do and it's going to come. Has, have you faced that? You must have as, as every athlete, every person that's had great accomplishments such as yours. Um, have you faced that? How have you dealt with that with people telling you, you know, maybe you should not, you, you should, you for know, maybe me, you should think about something else, <laughs> not, not the Olympics or... I think for me it was always a motivation. It was like, Oh, you think I cannot do it? Right. Then I'll show you how to do it. Yeah, challenge, you know. Right. And uh, well, for sure, everybody has their up and downs, and um, I think it's to show that to students too. You know, it's not a uh, even like gold medalists. Their their route to get there is mm -hmm. not perfect. It's not going all the time great. You know. Right. So everybody has their bad days, and you just have to forget about that day and mm -hmm. to go forward on the next day and to think about okay next day cannot be w worse as this day right, sometimes right. you know so, looking up. yeah it's looking up um do you ever give them advice i imagine some of them might seek advice from you i i try yeah like i said if they have a question okay. i'm pretty open um at the beginning of the semester most of my students usually don't know um What's because i don't tell them that right. I'm, oh, you, they I'm, don't know. No, oh. they don't know. They find out throughout the semester <laughs> usually. Now with the computers, Google right, and stuff. Right, right, right. But I usually don't tell them face to face. If they come and ask me a question or if they ask me, uh, mm -hmm. do you do any sports, then I'll tell them, but I won't tell them straight. Do you think that that's an important part uh, as an elite athlete being humble? I think so, but for me, the it was just... I wanted to. I wanted my students to see me as a teacher first, right. and not as like an athlete or a friend or something like that. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was really important to have the relationships teacher and mm -hmm. uh, students first. But um, yeah, when they find out, then it, it's sometimes they have funny questions or few students want to try to wrestle. <laughs> right, right. <But. laughs> 
<laughs> challenge you to wrestling. And you've mentioned that uh, Dev has a very, um, uh, he's very knowledgeable, or he looks at, there's, there's really a personalized approach where he's going to look at the movements you have to do in your wrestling. Um, and then adapt or look at the therapy that you need to strengthen certain parts because there may be weaknesses that arise in your body that you're not even necessarily aware of. Yeah. Um, can you speak a bit about that or, or how valuable that's been to have somebody uh, well, that works that way? Yeah, for sure. It's important that a person um, understand the sports because if you don't, then you can treat something, but then it might not be good for what the person is doing so mm -hmm. I think that was really really important and to know that you can't we, we can be off also off training so right. there's sometimes the approach is to be more conservative mm -hmm. but there was an approach where you no know, let's let's work on on a few uh, little movement or a few techniques and mm -hmm. that will get you better in terms of that way and then that will that little detail that help you or get you move better, then it's going to help you at the end of the road, you know? And with everything that you've accomplished uh, and now you're prepping for the Olympics, uh, to, for the qualifiers at the yeah. 2012 Olympics, um, what, what keeps you excited about what you do, about wrestling? What, what is the most exciting part when you wake up in the morning and you think, I'm you know, I'm doing what I love. What's the most exciting part of that thought for you? Well, for me, just to be doing every day yeah. what I like to do, like training, uh, pushing myself, uh, going to the limits, mm -hmm. um, and knowing that the goal is at the end. Mm -hmm. It's it, it's a um, process of it. It's a process, yeah. yeah, for sure. It's like you can't judge your performance only on, on the results. You, you have to enjoy your process. You have to enjoy it. The, the pad or the road to go right. and just thinking that maybe in a couple of years or even sooner that I will wake up in the morning and just go to work <laughs> it's gonna be different you know? <laughs> it's gonna be just different but just to do to travel uh, to visit different countries to have a chance to um, be around other athletes mm -hmm. and I think it's it's just uh, fantastic and I, I'm kind of lucky that I have that opportunity and I try to enjoy that opportunity as much as I can. Mm -hmm. And finally, what, what would be the piece of advice you give to young athletes that are, you know, st that are at the part, the, the, the stage where you were at years ago, starting off, uh, thinking about these dreams and uh, pursuing them? I'd say to them that for sure the road won't be easy. It would be difficult sometimes, but just pursue and when you go over those uh, difficult times there's better uh, things coming up and it's 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 fun to enjoy it, it's um it's worth it to continue and to finally enjoy the um, the good thing that all the time that you put into into the sports perfect thank you very much Thank you.